Elemental Leatherworking is one of the three in-game leatherworking proficiencies. You can only choose one of the three, and each category allows you to craft powerful in-game items. In this video, we're going to cover what items are available for you to craft, and where these recipes are located. Typically, the items in this set are most useful to rogues and feral druids, but as you'll see, there's a pretty wide range use for these items. This information will give you a better understanding of what elemental leatherworking can offer, and whether or not you should pick up this skill. As early as level 40, and a leatherworking skill of 225, you can choose your in-game leatherworking proficiency. For elemental training, the Horde will need to visit Brum Winterhoof and Arathi Highlands, and the Alliance will need to travel to the Searing Gorge and find Sarah Tanner. Upon arrival, you're going to need to complete a quest in order to learn the elemental skill. You're going to want to bring these materials ahead of time, which are two hearts of fire, two globes of water, two core of earths, and two breath of winds. These are regents that can be found off of elementals and their respective types around the world. Once you've completed the quest, Congratulations! You're now an elemental leather worker. Here are two new recipes you can craft. As for the rest of the patterns, they're extremely difficult to find around the world. <laughs> but the Helm of Fire is a sweet level 49 twink headpiece for feral druids or rogues, and it could be sold for quite the profit. As for the Gauntlets of the Sea, this would be a sick item to have on my feral druid as I'm leveling up and running dungeons. I can already see it's going to make my character that much more versatile in a group setting. Now realistically, for me to actually pull off that scenario, I'd either have to prepare the mats on an alt beforehand, or check it out guys, you don't have to speed through the levels. Enjoy the leveling process and go farm these mats along the way. Next, let's look at the living set. This set is the oddball of the group as it really only fits into resto druids. You could end up wearing the entire set by level 55 and be a gross healer in your time between 55 and 60 until you update this gear. So you could end up seeing a long use out of this set, but let's look at where these recipes can be found. Lucky for us, the Living Shoulders pattern is a vendor recipe. It can be bought off the leatherworking supplies vendors and Feralis for both Horde and the Alliance. Jangdor Swift Strider for the homeboys and Pratt McGrubbin for the ladies. Or the Alliance. Now, the Living Leggings recipe can be found off the Deadwood Shamans in Northern Fellwood. There's a plentiful amount of these guys, so the 2% drop rate isn't so bad, and tons of people run through this area, so you're going to end up seeing a lot of these recipes pop up on the auction house. Now, the final recipe in this set is owned by the Decaying Horror. This mob can be found in the back of Weeping Cave in Western Plaguelands, and it's an absolute monstrosity of a farm. The recipe is dropping at a rate just over 1%, and this guy in the forums can be seen farming this mob over a couple of days for the recipe to no avail. He killed what seems a thousand mobs in order to farm these horrors. Point is, if you see this recipe on the auction house, grab it immediately. Although if you happen to be in the area, go through this cave, as it may earn you an unexpected small fortune. Next, let's examine the Storm Shroud set. Now this set's a little odd, and in my opinion, only worth it if you're wearing the complete set all at once. The chest, gloves, and pants don't have any primary bonus stats such as stamina or agility, but they're offering a ton of critical strike and chance to dodge and replacement. Because of this fact, this set really only sees its full potential whenever you have all the set bonuses. A complete set offers you plus 6% critical strike, plus 1% hit, plus 3% dodge, and plus 14 attack power. This is only a set for feral druids or rogues because of the 3 piece bonus granting a 2% chance at a gain of 1 energy each swing. Ugh. I would have liked to have seen more than 1, but the 2 piece bonus is sweet granting a 5% chance for some small nature damage every melee attack. I could see this getting crazy amount of procs after popping all your cooldowns. Talk about burst. Add in that 4th bonus set and BAM, you become a force to be reckoned with. Again, like most of these items, they aren't the most practical, but they do absolutely have a place in the world for some guy's fantasy of twinking a 59 rogue or feral druid and bursting down his enemies. Now while this sounds epic and all, let's come back to reality and see where these recipes are located. The Storm Shroud armor recipe is dropped off the Archer and Oracles found in Azjara. It's dropping at a 2% rate, 
and luckily there's plenty of these guys to go around, so within an hour or two, you'll have your hands on this pattern. While you're in the area, you're going to want to go a little bit west and find the son of Arkarok Giant scattered throughout the Bay of Storms. These guys are dropping the Storm Shroud Shoulders recipe at 5%, so depending on your luck, you could be out of here in just a couple of minutes or stuck farming for a couple of hours. The Storm Shroud Gloves recipe drops off of two different mobs, the Wind Reaver and Princess Tempestria. These guys are spawned once a day or every two to three days in line with elemental invasions that take place on Azeroth, and don't worry, they'll yell an emote in the zone and let you know when they've arrived when they do. These guys bring the fight with them, and they have adds, so unless you're an elite player, you're going to want to bring some friends. The Wind Reaver can be found in Northwest Silithus, dropping the recipe at a 31% rate, and as for Princess Tempestria, she's found in Central Winter Spring, just west of Everlook, and she's dropping the recipe at 20%. Finishing off the set, we got the Storm Shroud Pants recipe. It's a vendor item found off of Leatherworking Supplies vendors in Western Plaguelands. The Horde vendor is found between Tearsful Glades and the Western Plaguelands entrance, and the Alliance vendor is between Alterac Mountains and the Western Plaguelands entrance. Although this is a vendor recipe, like its counterparts, the pants recipe can be hard to come by. It's speculated to have a respawn time of a couple of days. So if you swing by these vendors, make sure to buy out all their recipes. Next, let's look at the volcanic set. This is such a weird set like the rest of these items because again, we don't see any primary stamina or agility stats on this set. Just fire resistance and a set bonus of a chance to deal fire damage on melee attacks. Although I could imagine a scenario where you could squeeze yourself into an early raiding guild because you have these recipes and you can make a quick couple of fire resists for Molten Core. Or, as Roskar stated in the forums back in 2007, he theorycrafted a way to create a source of unlimited income by crafting these items with their low input price and disenchanting them and reselling the enchanting materials for a greater profit than the mats cost to make the armor. Big shout out to you, Roskar. The volcanic set recipe is going to be found in Lower Blackrock Spire and off some fire gut brutes in the Burning Steps. The fire gut brutes are primarily going to be found in caves around Dreadmall Rock and are dropping the leggings recipe at a 4% rate. As for the shoulders and chest piece, these are going to be found in Lower Blackrock Spire. Now I got a YouTuber's loot and found the chest recipe as I was recording, but this recipe drops off the Firebrand Grunts at a 5% rate. As for the shoulder recipe, it drops off the Firebrand Legionnaires, found in the same area, at a 23% rate. Now let's review those sweet perps you can craft in Elemental Leatherworking. We've got the Molten Belt and Molten Helm and the Shifting Cloak. Now the helmet seems to be the best in slot fire resist headpiece for rogues and feral druids, and the argument for the belt is debatable. It doesn't offer nearly the amount of fire resistance as Lava Belt, which is also a main leatherworking recipe, but it does have a ton of agility stacked onto it. In terms of efficiency, the Molten Belt is way more expensive than just going with the base Lava Belt for fire resistance. But depending on what you're looking for, there's value in the Molten Belt. Both of these recipes are going to be bought off of Lokto Stark Bargainer, found inside Black Rock Depths, and the helmet recipe requires a friendly faction reputation with the Thorian Brotherhood, and the Molten Belt recipe requires a revered reputation with these guys. These recipes are bind on pickup, but of course, like the rest of the crafted items, they're bind on equip, so they are distributable to guild members and the community. Our last item, Shifting Cloak, is pretty insane. It's considered one of the best in slot cloaks for tanks because of its 1% increase in dodge, but this cloak is utilized by more than just tanks. Its crafting recipe is pretty expensive and the pattern's hard to come by, so this item could make you quite the profit if you can get your hands on this recipe. Luckily, this epic recipe isn't bind on pickup, so you have a chance to buy this bad boy off the auction house. But if you're looking to obtain it yourself, you're going to have to travel to Dire Mall North and farm not Thimblejack's cache. Cash. The Shifting Cloak recipe is only dropping at a 2% rate, so good luck, and hopefully you don't go crazy chasing after this recipe. Overall, I'm kind of disappointed with Elemental Leatherworking. 
the pattern drops are pretty hard to come by and the underwhelming value these items have in relation to their drop chances just kind of leave a bad taste in my mouth. You could spend months dedicated to farming these recipes and not obtain them all. And even if you did, are the items really worth it? They may be, but that's up to you to decide. Again, it's not all about the end game best in slot gear. It's about what's fun to you and how you want to experience the game. Imagine being the master leather worker on your realm able to craft any recipe in the game. You'd be a rock star. Anyways, thanks for watching guys and if you enjoyed please leave me a like. A lot of time goes into these videos and it's extremely motivating to see a positive response from the community enjoying these guides and it tells me you guys want to see more. Thanks again, it's your boy Grace for Days, see y'all in the next one.